What's up, everybody? Welcome to Smoking Weed and Talking Mixed Martial Arts. My name is Jared. I'm here with Paul. What up? This is episode number 52, coming to you from Las Vegas, Nevada. Today's episode, we're going to be talking a little bit about Bellator. We're going to be talking a whole lot about UFC 244, the BMF showdown between George Masvidal and Nate Diaz. Before we get into all that, let's check out our Weed of the Week, Paul. Smoke weed every day. This week, we are smoking on two fine strains of Las Vegas cannabis. We got some monster cookies left over from last week, which Paul just took a nice hit of. We also added to the mix some skunk berry today. Skunk berry is uh, it's a hybrid cross of skunk number one and blueberry. And it sounds you know, fairly typical, but the terpenes on each of those two strains blend for some real nice flavor and yeah, it's effect. Got a good flavor. You get a nice kind of uplifting buzz on that skunk, and you get a little bit of a body high from that blueberry. Uh, doesn't make you too tired. Smells good, tastes good. One of my favorites. Dude, so while we're smoking this weed, man, there's a crazy thing that happened this week. It's sort of related to fighting, but you had to have heard about fucking Randy Couture, right? Yeah, unfortunately, Randy Couture had a crazy uh, heart attack this week but he's a fucking savage at the same time <laughs> yeah, those of you that somehow don't know who randy couture is of course multiple time ufc heavyweight champion and now action movie star wrestling legend randy couture how old mm -hmm. is he now 108 <laughs> he's got no, randy's like, got to be close like to 50. 54 maybe yeah. I think. he's in all the expendable movies of course yeah but yeah this fucking guy has a heart attack right which is terrible yeah but then he walks himself to the hospital here's the thing though he he shows up to the gym, does a full workout, said his chest hurts, and then took a foam roller out and tried to roll his chest out, and then a decided foam roller like a yoga mat roller, yeah, yeah, like a then, back roller, yeah, and then tried to roll it out of his chest, yeah, and then he decides he's gonna walk to the freaking hospital after after the workout though, so he, and then he has a massive heart attack, and only spends two days in the hospital, and then literally walks home. What the fuck? Yeah, I heard he said he's I walked here, I'm gonna walk home. Yeah. Damn. Savage. That's crazy. Has a workout. Tries to roll the heart attack out with a foam roller. I was like, fuck it. Finish up this shit. And then take a stroll to the hospital. Jesus. That's a man. That's a tough man. Well, if we didn't know he was tough already. They literally took him into an emergency surgery. Jesus Christ. I mean, thank God he's all right. Yeah. But uh, that's a crazy story. <laughs> yeah, fuck. Like, that is some shit you would expect to see in his movie. Like, the yeah. character in Expendables has a heart attack. It's like, nah, I'm good. I'm going to roll it out with a roller. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to finish shooting these motherfuckers. And I'll walk over to the hospital. Yeah, fuck. People will be like, damn, this movie is fucking lame. <laughs> That's so unrealistic. <laughs> so unrealistic. <laughs> Meanwhile, Mr. Couture is doing that shit in real life. And he's already, he seems like he's doing well. I mean... As good as he can be doing. As good as you can for having a heart attack. Yeah. You wouldn't expect someone to be... Obviously, he's in great shape. Yeah. You wouldn't expect someone like that to have a heart attack to begin with. Yeah. He might have a history of it, like, in his family or something. Though. Yeah, who knows? Yeah. But that's crazy just to basically shrug some shit off like that. Fuck yeah, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. I'm still trying to imagine... Feeling a heart attack pains and being like, No, I just... I need the fucking foam roller. Yeah. He's like asking his boy... George, George, give me the roller. I, I got something wrong with my arm. My left arm. <laughs> Are you okay, champ? Yeah, I'm fucking fine. I don't know. I'm going to keep working out. I'll keep it. This is pain it. in my left arm. I'm just going yeah. to see what happens. I'll fucking ride this out. Jeez. God damn. Well, the speedy recovery, as I think you're recovering fine. I'm guessing you're fucking walking home. I think yeah, the champ is going to be just fine. He's a savage. So word up to fucking... Yeah, Randy enjoy. Couture. Jesus. I can only hope to be in that fine shape if I have a heart attack. <laughs> right? Shit. Man, I'd say he is what? A bad motherfucker. Yeah, jeez. He is. God damn, if he was younger, he could be competing for this bad motherfucker <laughs> title that's going to be sticking around, right? Well, he almost had to because that, that'll take us into a, like, this week we found out Nate Diaz from USADA tested positive for heightened levels of I don't know what but they, I heard it was an S A R M which I'm not exactly sure of, but it's basically Osterine. It's the same shit that O'Malley is tested positive for. Uh-huh. 
which he's been a little upset on Twitter. Yeah. Because he is still claiming to be in like the exact same situation, but he's been suspended a year and a fucking half because he had the, the picograms yeah. come back like John did. Yep. But yeah, anyways, not to, to dive into that, yeah. but yeah, he tests positive for what, a trace amount? How do we find out about this? We don't find out because... We don't find out because you saw it. We don't find out because he gets pulled out of the fight, but we find out because Nate Diaz goes to social media and he goes on the attack on USADA and the UFC saying that there's just no way this this is like this is his fault he pretty much is like here's the thing it's like he took it as he pulled out of the fight and it was in his hands more than it was he failed the test and that he was pulled yeah he was basically like he said he's like you know i'm not showing up quiet about it yeah and he wasn't gonna do that that i was fucking cheating and fuck that and then he made a comment about he doesn't even eat meat which i assume that uh they must have said maybe it came from some meat you ate yeah and uh he said he doesn't take any supplements he takes whole food fucking vitamins and don't even eat fucking meat yeah and he was gonna be goddamn if somebody was gonna call him a fucking cheater and he ain't doing shit until usada and ufc clear his motherfucking name as i believe how he phrased that yep and and later this week, they did exactly that on Friday night. Yeah, yeah, later on that week, which is pretty quick turnaround, which some people have... Hey, I just want to make a quick aside, folks. Uh, the studio right next to us, they're doing some work uh, as we're recording in studio here. So you might hear a pounding noise from time to time on today's episode. Nothing we can do about that construction here in the studio. But anyways, Nate, back to Nate. It's getting noisy. <laughs> Fuck. That shit is bad. Oh, are they fucking replacing their floor up there, dude? It sounds like it. It's the it's the folks next door just banging away. Can't change it though. Hope it's not too distracting, folks. But anyways, back to Nate. He says uh he ain't gonna do shit until they get his fucking name cleared. And then they they clear his name, they come out and they say, Yeah, they found it in this multivitamin that he took. Um and then some people were saying that that was a little too quick. <clears throat> That in the past has taken months, and that makes it somehow fucking shady, right? But I think if you look at the big picture of everything that's happened with John Jones, yeah, and then a handful of other fighters like O'Malley that have gotten caught up in something similar, and there's been another fighter that had the picogram pulsing, I think they're evolving, they're learning about minimum thresholds, and they're learning about these tiny trace amounts that it's not as big a deal as they thought it initially was. Well, and that so. goes into the question of why they don't follow some of the bigger organizations in major sports and define thresholds where oh, players yeah. can only have, like if it's, <clears throat> like in the NFL, there's a certain level of something you you have to reach in your system till it's deemed performance enhancing and you fail. You know right. what I'm saying? And if you have below that threshold, they don't <laughs> even fucking talk about it. It's not breaking Yeah, it's news. no big deal. So it's <laughs> like, I feel like the UFC should go to a similar... Well, with USADA and maybe... They absolutely should. Yeah. Cause it's ridiculous the that they have it. Nobody knows what the fucking... Did they sign a new deal with USADA? Uh, that I don't know. Hmm. I, think I know it's coming up, though, I think. The first one, but... Yeah. I can't remember exactly. But the fact of the matter is that there's just levels of bullshit that could always be contaminated in any kind of supplement you take. Whether... Because remember... If you look back, there's even been USADA-approved shit that has gone back, and someone had said it was tainted. You know what right. I'm saying? Like, obvious salt, third-party certified, and this is probably... You know what I'm saying? It's... Every, well, it's there's, the point. There, it, it, the point <clears throat> is that anything can happen when you're taking a bunch of supplements as a high-level athlete. Absolutely. And it wasn't even taking a whole bunch. But some, at some point, we have to... St- say that these levels they're testing for is ridiculous it came out they said that he tested positive for what would have been one ten thousandth of a therapeutic dose so if you took one therapeutic dose of this substance and divided it into ten thousand fucking mini doses he took one of those yeah and then it had absolutely no effect on a system whatsoever. So then why then are you why flagging? Are we, why are we talking yeah. about this then? Why yeah. did this shit come out? Yeah. Why, why did Nate, you know, wh- why are we even fucking talking about it? Y'all should just shut the fuck up and move on without telling yeah. anybody shit. Yeah. The Christ on a stick, man. Well, and I know Nate came out <clears throat> and said something to him mm. about this, but at the end of the day, it, it was just a matter of time before USADA would be like, oh, well, then let's get to the bottom of this and let's go to, you know arbitration all this shit that they've right. done with countless other athletes so it's the fact that nate diaz like put 
he put the heat on them. He completely put the heat on them, which is the other reason that this got sped up so quick. Yeah. Because clearly, I mean, in a statement... He said, fix this shit. And they told him to keep quiet about it. It seems like they basically wanted him to keep quiet about it and they were the fight do was a, over. Yeah, and then, and then they would do an testing. investigation. Yeah. And then he was like, fuck that. If it comes out, people are going to think I fucking cheated. Yeah. And he fuck was that. fuck that. Yeah. I don't blame him. If he, he, knows, he knows... It was an incredibly smart way to play yeah. it. And I don't know if he... Thought well, about the consequences of playing it that way, but either way, it was genius because it's it shifted the 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 burden. The yeah. burden's always on the fucking fighter, right? This shifted the whole focus back on the USADA. Well, here's the deal too, and here's the biggest thing he's done here is he's put he's put the ball back in the fighter's court. You know what I mean? Now the guy he's not going to be the only guy to do this. Now that he's broken that threshold, as far as like, you know what? It's not as much on us. It should be more on them to be quick yeah. with with whatever study and whatever stuff they have and be able to let us know what the fuck's going on. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I think he won't be the last fighter to do this, but he's definitely, like, Nate Diaz is super underrated when it comes to, like, rights or fighters and, and like, pay and shit like that, dude. He's, like, he's pushed the envelope. It's, just, it's part of its discrimination against his personality because he's a weed smoker. And he sometimes comes across as not being super eloquent. Yeah. But, but think some about people it. think he's stupid. He's some dumb pothead. But he, that's far think from the Think about CBD. Truth. Like far from CBD the outside the UFC is probably <laughs> one thing that has 90% of the fighters outside the UFC have on their trunks is some CBD company. Yeah. And that started with Nate Diaz in a vape pen <clears throat> after that fucking fight. Yeah. At the press conference. I mean, really, where people were like, oh, wait, what? Yeah, for real. Created this BMF title out of thin air, that everybody's on board with that, and as we've often discussed on the show, despite and what did all that come from? It's not a one. It just came from him jumping on the mic and he said he wants to fight him for the baddest motherfucker of the game belt. Yep. Like, and then just like when he got the Connor fight, remember the the infamous? It just has a ring to it, you know. That's how we got the Connor fight too. Was his fucking? He gets on the mic and says, "Connor, imagine if they would have done this with Connor in the second fight." Yeah. That would have been cool. It would have made a lot more money, probably. But it's going to fucking kill. This is 100% going to be the highest selling pay per view of the year, without a doubt. There's yeah, no. This could be the thing. I don't give a shit about that. That ESPN. December card is stacked, but this is the people's main event oh, this of the is a year. Fight people have, are gravitating towards. Yeah. For sure. Street Jesus versus fucking Nate Diaz, dude. 209, bitches. That shit's gonna... This is gonna be a fucking... Well, let's dive into it. Let's start from the top. <laughs> yeah. It's the new damn button here at the show. <laughs> yeah, let's dive right into it, man. Dude, fucking... This is gonna be the... This the card is sick, here. top to bottom. Yeah. First off, prelims, early prelims, main card. Who you got, dude? Let's just do it straight up. Starting at the tip top. Yep. Who's the baddest motherfucker? Who's, who's going to walk away with that BMF title? It's going to be Nate motherfucking Diaz. This is his title. This is his fucking fight. This is Diaz time. I think this is the start of something great. I agree. Diaz fucking squad. Led I agree. By Nate. Uh, Nate's been leading that team for a long time. Now Nate's going to swoop on in and lead the fucking charge. And I think this sets up Nate Diaz to just be... Just to transcend the sport as, like, the guy now in the UFC. Yeah. Because I think then a win like this puts him in a real nice spot in the front row at Madison Square Garden when both those motherfuckers fight for the title. Or, no, sorry, not Madison Square Garden, Las Vegas. When those motherfuckers fight for the title. Yeah, you're talking about Covington and Usman. Absolutely, and I guarantee (laughs) Covington and Usman will both be in the front row at Madison Square Garden as well talking shit to Nate if he wins. I'm sure. And I do think Nate's going to win. I think he's going to win by a round three submission. Dude, wouldn't you like to see Nate Diaz versus Colby Covington for the welterweight title? Tell nope. me that's not. I'd rather see Usman. I think Usman's a much better challenge for Nate, and it'll make him a, like, it'll make him a better fighter. You think Usman will just wrestle fuck him? That's the thing. I think he, even if he does, Nate's jiu-jitsu is such, at such a higher level than it was earlier in his yeah, career that it, it'd be interesting to see. But yeah, Kuzma. Uh, well, you're gonna no. have his hands full with George Masvidal. Yeah, we both think he's gonna win, but Masvidal is not some kind of walkover. 
But the the thing though, it's Colby Covington and him. It's it's a good fight to like for the build up and all that shit would be fun. Dude, how many punches would get thrown in that fight? A lot. A lot. <sighs> a lot. Same thing with the Usman fight though. Usman's got a fucking gas tank for days too though. That's what makes this Usman and, and Colby fight interesting. But then you throw another cardio fucking killer like Nate too. Yeah. That's one thing I think that's gonna hurt Masvidal in this fight. When was the last time Masvidal was in a five round fight that went all five rounds? I don't think he's ever been in one. I'm not certain, but a five rounder? Yeah. Yeah, he's been in plenty of threes, but he hasn't been in many. He's been in. I think he's been in two main event cards, like two main event like fight nights. Yeah, that was his last ones, and they didn't go to exactly, and they didn't go distance. So, Hmm, that's true. He's not going to have that five round. But Diaz, on the other hand, has been in I think three or four, maybe five. Not more than that, because early in his career, they had him on a lot of those fight night cards. Yeah, but they weren't doing five rounds then. Yeah, yeah, they weren't. Huh? But still, I, Nate's been five rounds a few times, and Nate's got yeah, cardio been. for days. And I think in the third round, near the end, they're both going to... I feel like it's going to be like a stand. It's going to be like a dirty boxing type fight. I think like there's going to be a lot of clinch work, a lot of Nate with the collar tie, like throwing the bows hitting him in the body, but Masvidal's going to be hitting him back at the same time. You know what I'm saying? I think, I don't think any guy, either of them gets knocked down. Masvidal's not going for a takedown. No, I, was, I, I mean knocked down either of them. I don't think either of them knocks each other down. Yeah, probably not. They're, they're both strong. If somebody does, though, I bet you Masvidal knocks Nate down just because <laughs> Nate tends to get knocked down, but he never gets knocked out. Yeah, <laughs> Connor knocked him down a few times. Knocked him down, what, four or five times? That second fight? The only person ever to fucking KO him is that crazy Josh Thompson. Yeah, but Josh Thompson. Shin to the floor. Yeah, and dude. Fucking kick. Yeah. It just Josh perfect. Thompson fucking openly kicked him in the head four fucking times. Nate was so dazed he couldn't put his hands up, and Thompson just fucking <laughs> straight up just kicked him in the head till he went away. Dude, anybody watching that got a little bit of a concussion. Yeah, <laughs> but since then, though, Nate's never really... He, no, when Nate gets knocked time. down, he's never really in trouble, is my mm-hmm. point, because he's always willing to fight back. He does a very good. He does a very good job doing that. It's like whenever he gets days, he goes into his dirty boxing and he he does really well. So yeah, I like Diaz. Round three submission, rear naked choke. That sets up all kinds of possibilities. So yeah, I like it too. I like fucking Diaz by decision. But. It's not going to be no walk in the park, guarantee you that. No, it's going to be a great fight. Masvidal's game as fuck. It's going to be a great Masvidal could win. It's not like he Very well, yeah. He, he could very well could I'm win. I'm not going to be sitting here shot. Because Mas- Masvidal could drop but. anybody in this division anytime with the right shot. Yeah. This What's is Nate's it? moment, man. This is his shit. This, this is, is his fun. chance, yeah. This is his chance because... Connor's not even in the spotlight anymore. It'll nah. be crazy because if they get that third fight going, it could be Nate that has the one with all the fucking shine. Or what if Connor waits for Nate to fight Colby, win the belt, and then Connor fights with a 170 belt? <laughs> how, oh. how upsetting would every 170 pounder be? <laughs> Did he, think, he says he's fighting January 18th. We'll see. Supposedly he's against Cowboy Cerrone. I've heard of Cerrone or Gaethje. I heard it's like a really it's high Cerrone chance of it being Cerrone. Seat. Yeah. Which is smart. I mean, Two guys coming lost. Coming off yeah, a, loss, a couple so, guys coming yeah. off a loss in the top five. It's not like Cerrone's... Lo- Actually, Cerrone's lost two fights in a row, hasn't he? Like three. No, just two. Because he won his last fight before. He the- lost to Pettis. No, he didn't lose to Pettis. He he won. He beat. No, he lost to Tony Ferguson, and he's lost to Justin Gaethje. But he was on a win streak before that. Was he? Yeah, because remember the Tony and him fight was a huge fight. At the time, they both were on a win streak, and it was like who was gonna fight Khabib next. <clears throat> Cowboys definitely only lost two rounds. Well, he's a. Uh, if he gets to fight, I mean that that would be pretty interesting. Connor's still saying he gives purse to charity. <clears throat> yeah. Which is interesting. 
I'm about to pull up his record right here. See what's up. Don't want to do him dirty. Yeah, it's two losses. Yeah, Justin Gaethje, Tony Ferguson. Then he beat Iaquinta, Hernandez, and Mike Perry. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he lost. He did. He, he did have a three Mike fight Perry. streak. Yeah, he beat Mike Perry, and then yeah. he went back to fifty five. Beat uh, Hernandez, and then beat. Um, what's his name? He lost to Masvidal, then a decision to Lawler, and then that Darren Till fight. Yeah. Then he beats Medeiros, lost to Leon Edwards, and he went on a three fight streak, and then he lost to yeah, Ferguson and Gage. Yeah. So you know it's just classic Donald Cerrone ness, you know, yeah. up and down. So I think he's still game for the Connor fight. I think Connor's down for it. I think Connor wins that fight. Yeah, I think Connor wins that fight fairly handily. I mean, but it, it should be. But fun. I think that ties into this fight as well because this be a what if. Who's to say either of these guys doesn't win this fight and just call Connor out? Well, Connor said he wants, that's what he wants is the yeah. winner of this fight. And Masvidal has been all over all the airwaves saying Connor's name, talking about he'd, he'd fucking murder him. Yeah. Literally, he's like, I, I can't fight him. They, they'd put me in jail because I'd fucking murder him. <laughs> that's what he said. Well, that's funny. So, but there's a lot of heat there. I, I like that, that though, because in the Diaz three fight too is, it's a good. It, it's, it's I, I like it. And Connor's kind of crazy though. He just wants that one seventy fight. I don't know why. Or both these guys. A lot. What a storyline that a few, I've heard a few people out there say, and we've talked about this as well. Both both these guys might show up at one hundred and sixty five pounds. That'd be interesting too. I I mean not really any like crazy accredited sources, but I've seen a lot of people <laughs> online talking about it. But mm. that would even be a more of like a needle push move for both these guys. Yeah, I'd be pretty interested if that happened too. But I don't know, we'll see. It's right around the corner. I mean, yeah, really literally a week away, away, dude. I can't believe it. It just seemed away. like it was so long ago. <clears throat> like it was like going to be so far away, like not too long ago. Is what I mean. Like around the press conference time, it was like, man, we still got a lot of time. And then now it's just creeped up on us hella quick. Man, last week I was worried, though. I was like, if they would have canceled the top of that fight, what would they have done? But then I looked at the rest of the card, and I saw the co-main event, Kelvin Gastelum versus Darren Till. Yeah, that's uh, 185 pounds, which is a new class for uh, And hey, that could be the baddest motherfucker in the game fight, too. (laughs) Both these guys are two game motherfuckers. Not too long ago, Masvidal was sitting across there from Till, and they were talking about how game each other were and how they were willing to go in there and just knock each other dead. Whatever happens, happens. And we've already yeah, seen Gaslam. Yeah, that should Gaslam. be a great scrap, too. I, I tend to favor Gaslam in this fight, honestly. I like I, Till. I, I'm pretty interested in how Till looks without going through his ridiculously Have, did you see it? Did you see last week? Fight. Last week, he posted a photo of himself. No, he I looks like a fucking animal right now. He looks like super in shape. He hasn't fought in since since Jones. Masvidal slept in. What was that? June. Yeah, it's been a while. So you like uh, and Gaslam? I like Till. Gaslam coming off that uh, his last performance and was losing. See, I think good against Whitaker. I thought. That's that's one thing is I think Gaslam is. I feel like he's just not. I think the fight, his last fight, like that takes something away from you, like long term. He got, he took a lot of big fucking shots, and that in that fifth round, that fifth round and the third round too. Oh, he dealt a lot of big shots in that fight. He too. did, but in the fifth round, he was a zombie and was yeah, just getting eaten alive, it. like fucking, like I don't know how Adesanya in the fifth round picked it up the way he did, but in the fifth round, Gaslam got like. Fucking career shortening shots hit hit him multiple occasions. <laughs> like yeah, I, like I don't it, mean to laugh, but yeah, like it was pretty brutal. So I'm very curious, yeah. and honestly, Till too. Till's last knockout, like that was pretty scary too. Like Till. he's been embarrassed a couple times. Yeah, so like both these guys got really have something to prove here. So yeah, I'm taking Till, I'm taking Gaston, but it's gonna be a great fight no matter what. What is your, uh, how do you think that happens? Oh, I think Gastelum's going to knock him out. Probably what third round? round. It'll be late. I got Till knocking him out in the second. 
knocking Kelvin Gastelum out. Uh, yeah. I think those shots did something to his chin. <laughs> yeah. We all know that won't happen, but <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, how about that Stephen Wonderboy Thompson making his uh, comeback fight against Vincente Luque? I like that fight. That dude's a beast, man. That, him and Perry. He's got good size, too. So, like, I think he, Thompson's not going to tower over him like he has done with, the, with a few of his opponents. I don't know, Wonder Boy. Wonder Man. <laughs> he need, he, it's about time he becomes Wonder Man instead of Wonder Boy. I like, I don't know. I think Thompson probably gets back on track here, but I would not count out Luke at any any yeah, point. It's here. hard to say because Thompson's got, such a good fighter. He's won nine in a row, right? He's not a like an animal. Like Luke is a fucking animal. Yeah, Luke is like dr- knock down, drag it out, fight kind yeah, of guy. Get in your face, fight dirty, fucking get. Well, bloody, and that's the thing is war. that's also Thompson's biggest strength as well as his biggest biggest weakness because if he's able to stay on the outside and make it his fight, he will be very successful. But he can't get too comfortable getting on the inside when he's standing with him because then it could turn into a dog fight. Yeah. So it's really going to come down to how Thompson handles Luke's pressure and how he's able to not get cut off around the octagon and be able to, you know, because, you know, he's point karate fighter you know he he's gonna hit you with the big strike he's not looking to pet and i know thompson does pepper people sometimes but he's he's looking for the big the big kicks the big punches you know what i mean so it's it'll be interesting it's gonna be it's gonna be a good one i, I don't think. know I, I i tend to i think luke is gonna fucking win that fight that's who i'm picking i know the smart pick is probably wonder boy but i think he's gonna lose man i just feel it in my bones uh, probably, yeah, I kind of agree. The odds are in that fight here. I go it's got to be close. Shit. I don't bet Man. a lot of fights, but I don't gamble much later living here in Vegas. Honestly, I guess I'll take Luke as well. Yeah, just because Thompson's a little on the back nine of his career, and Luke just, seems like it's he's he's really putting together a run recently. That Barb uh, Barbarina fight too, and then uh, freaking Mike Perry, and then this. This is going to be a good one. <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's going to be a good fight. Um, we're both picking Luke A there. Uh, what's what's next on the board? We got a good heavyweight. Uh, we got Derek Lewis coming back after his knee surgery. Derek Lewis with two two healed knees. I wonder if he stretched this Lewis. camp. He, he might have stretched. even stretched. He yeah. might have even jogged a little. What? <laughs> <laughs> This dude could be putting in hour trainings a day instead of them 30 minutes. <laughs> no, we joke because he jokes, but Derek Lewis come back. Uh, Ivanov, I like Derek Lewis in this fight. I think this is Derek Lewis's chance to really put him. To... That's how you say it, right? Yeah. Ivanov, Ivanov. You want to hear some funny shit? My roommate saw this fool at Blue Martini the other night. Really? Yeah. Ivanov? Not Blue Martini. What The one over here, the Martini bar. Oh, the Martini? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, shit. That's hilarious. You saw him over there. Yeah. Did you know who I sat by in that bar <laughs> once? OJ. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, he told me about that shit. Fucking OJ Simpson, two bar stools over. It's <laughs> a weird thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, anyways. Yeah. Um, I think Derek Lewis is going to sleep him. Yeah, I think That's so. That's what I think. I think Derek I think Lewis so is going to sleep him and then be but back. But you can't in the mix. count him out also because Ivanov is. His game, but I think Derek Lewis his is game, just a different the level. Park. I just think Derek Lewis with two knees and feeling good is going to be something we haven't seen before. Yeah. And I'm excited to see what fucking happens. Speaking of a Derek Lewis, I know this is completely off topic, and we have not talked about this before the show, but someone who's talked about Derek Lewis in the past, fucking Greg Hardy is going to fight Alexander Volkov in two weeks on a two-week notice in fucking Russia. What the fuck, dude? He's going to get his ass beat. Thank God. It's about time somebody came along and beat Greg Hardy's ass. I'm never but if he be... doesn't, then he's probably going to fight Derek Lewis next. I'm, I've, nev- I'm, I've never been so interested. In a Greg Hardy fight? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. That, card went from, that card went from eh to actually pretty legit. It was Dosen. It went 
we had Dos Santos in the uh, Volkov, and then that fell out, so it seemed like Dude, it was Volkov just... is no joke, man. Yeah, that, that'll not, really he's... see what's up with Greg Hardy. I mean, yeah. all the the but uh, don't woman forget we all... uh, charges aside. Yeah, you know the guy does seem to have some fucking fighting skills. Clearly, just don't bring your inhaler. Just don't bring your inhaler. Try not to cheat. Don't kick him in the nuts. And uh, I. Th- I can't see him possibly getting past this dude. I mean, if he goes out and sleeps him in fucking 20 seconds, I guess I'll be eating my words next episode. The only thing is, like, Volkov has, in the past, been known to get... that you pressure him, he's not very good. Derek Lewis beat him, but Derek Lewis beat him with that last-second KO. And Derek Lewis was getting beat very... He was getting his ass kicked. Yeah, he was getting beat. The whole fucking fight. Yeah. Like and he took first sh- round, not too and bad. And then he took his shorts off, and then fucking ever since then he's the biggest fucking star in heavyweight. Yep. Yeah. I love Derek Lewis. He's my the shit. Balls was hot. <laughs> my balls. <laughs> <laughs> the infamous. But yeah. my balls was hot fight. But yeah, I, I think mean, Derek Lewis could very well fight fucking Greg Hardy after that. I think that's a fight that both them want. Could you imagine some bizarro world where Greg Hardy actually does it, goes up and becomes UFC champ? I think I might. I don't think he'll become up. the champion. I think. God. I don't think he has what it takes to to beat somebody like Stipe or Dear God. Daniel. Because I don't think Derek Lewis or beat Stipe either. or Junior don't or Derek Lewis. Don't say Derek Lewis gonna fuck him up. Alexander Volkov is probably going to fuck him up. Yeah, I just I could see a scenario birth. where he beats Volkov though, because Volkov has been known to take big shots and keep his hands in weird places. Like when he yeah. was fighting Derek Lewis, his hands were out like this, and he's just yeah, like some old timey face. Yeah, John L. Sullivan boxing. Yeah, <laughs> he's yeah, long, he's but like in all the, the wrong air. ways. That's why when we were watching that Lewis fight, we knew that Lewis could KO him because he kept his hands and was like, yeah. dude, he could do Lewis this. Lewis just kept throwing it till it hands. landed. Yeah. Then it, I mean, it happened. He had to get past his hands. Literally. It wasn't like he slipped in through his fucking clever guard. Yeah. I mean, so yeah, it could happen. But most likely it's not. I mean, honestly. All right, back to the card. All right, well, we're still on the main pay-per-view card here with all these fights. So Derek Lewis... We're still on the main pay-per-view. We still got Kevin Lee versus Gregor Gillespie at 155 pounds, which is Gillespie. A fucking taking Gillespie. Dude, I really like Kevin Lee. I can't pick against him, man. That's my boy. I got to fucking say Kevin Lee. I fuck with Kevin Lee, but at the end of the day, Greg Gillespie is on the trail to the title. And he I, does seem I to be, really, though. really, Honestly, this really. This is just a sentimental pick. I really hope he gets to Khabib. Because I think Gregor Gillespie gives Khabib all the issues, bro. Like, all the issues. You think? Someone like him or Justin Gaethje would give Khabib the issues, dude. He'd be have He'd be tough. Those are his two toughest fights in the weight class. And it, if and Gregor needs a huge performance here to get himself in the conversation to possibly ever get that fight. And I think Kevin Lee is, unfortunately, the perfect victim. For him to get his name out there. Because Kevin Lee has a good following. Like I said, I fuck with Kevin Lee. I like him. But he's just kind of on the downward trending side of his career, unfortunately, right now. I know he's still young. But, like, he's had some tough outings these last few fights. And he's had a hard time. And he's only been with Faraz for so long. It's only a first fight with him, isn't it? It is his first fight with him. I just, uh, I like Kevin. Yeah, I when know. I met him, he dug the podcast shirt. He was like, "Yeah, that's a cool shirt." <laughs> <laughs> but uh, fucking, I, I don't know. I'm sorry, Greg Gillespie's. I'm picking Lee. You're picking Gillespie. You're probably right, but I'm rooting for my boy. He's gonna fucking win. Yeah, he's gonna pull this through. This next fight is huge. Yeah, this first fight on the prelims contentions. now. Yeah, we got uh, a big fight at at light heavyweight, two of fivers. Oh. We got Corey Anderson and Johnny Walker. This is the close it out on ESPN too. So this. This is probably why they put him in the main event of this one. These, the winner of this fight is the the argument against Dominic, Dominic Reyes', Reyes yeah. title shot. Let's so, say Johnny Walker just goes out. Corey Anderson goes to shoot in on Johnny him. Walker. If Johnny Walker, if Corey Anderson shoots in on Johnny Walker and he hits him with a flying knee and KOs him, Johnny Walker's fighting John Jones next. But if Corey Anderson goes in there and double legs Johnny Grinds Walker and just rocks him for sweet. fucking five rounds right or three out. rounds, I mean. We're definitely going with uh, Dominic Reyes. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I think you're a hundred percent correct on that, dude. I think uh, a, a, a splashy Johnny Walker win leads to a, a title shot. A boring Corey Anderson win leads to Dominic Reyes. Yeah, yeah. And it's unfortunate for Corey. Nothing Anderson. against Corey; he's a hell of a fighter, but he's boring. Hard, man. Yeah, he's he's, boring he's hard to get. It's hard to get watched. And he's going against a guy who's known for his flashy awesomeness. Yeah, like he's going against a dude that's like. But I don't know if Johnny Walker's ready is the problem. Man, that's some purple here. weed right there. Oh, you got some in there? Yeah. There you go, baby. That fucking skunk berry was green. Those monster cookies are purple. Purples make sense with the lineage. The granddaddies. Purple Urkels. Granddaddy Urkels. But um, yeah, so I don't who know. Who are you picking? I, I, I want Johnny Walker to win, so I'm going to pick Johnny Walker. Then Corey Anderson gets it. I could see him grinding out some some decision here. I could see that. I don't know. I'd like to see Walker versus Jones, so I'm, I'm going with that pick. What if Corey Anderson knocks out Johnny Walker? Yeah, what if it's the opposite of what we're saying? What if Corey Anderson comes out and just lights fucking Johnny Walker on fucking up, KOs him in some splashy-ass way? Does he take that rub off of fucking Ray as enough to get the title shot? Maybe. Because you got to think about it this with Corey, with Corey Anderson. If his striking just, like, looks ridiculously better, like, like crazy better. Is then, he done anything this camp to – has he know. brought in somebody new? I don't know. He no, he, he, trains, he trains at uh, – up there with – um uh. Frankie's team. Mark Henry and them? Yeah, he's with Mark Henry. So he's got good striking coaches yeah, around him. Yeah, he's got a good striking But coach. here's the thing. You got to you gotta think, if he goes out and just shows a ridiculously high-level performance striking-wise, how much different is there between him and John Jones? Because... <laughs> Corey Anderson is also a national champion wrestler. Oh, he's a hell of a wrestler. That's why he uses it so much. That's why we, you know, we tend to people so, think he might be boring. But I don't know. Is <laughs> I'm not too worried about John Jones facing wrestlers the way he handled DC. I mean, yeah, but I know everybody brings a different know. you know type of thing to the table. But I'm not too concerned about that any more than anybody else. Not taking anything away from Corey Anderson. But. Yeah, no, Corey Anderson's never going to beat John. I'm just <laughs> speaking all hypothetical. It would be interesting, though, if he comes out <coughs> and risks it, because that's a risk on his part, too. What, is, what does Corey do? Does he know that if he uh, – does he go out and just stay safe, grind that win out, and then hope for the best? Or does well, he go out and just risk if throwing he wins this fight, If he wins this fight, we're looking at a possible next fight. It's going to be a guy like the winner of Jacques yeah. Ray and, and – um, and um, yawn. yawn, yeah. <coughs> Rather than the title shot, <coughs> unless he oh, wins and just jumps on the mic and says some shit that fucking <coughs> gets so many retweets and fucking, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean we're still living in the Conor McGregor effect, and it boils down to every fight. I yeah, mean. <clears throat> it's who's making the most noise, and I, unfortunately, I don't think I don't think Dominic made the best. The biggest noise he he made the biggest noise performance wise, but like <clears throat> promotion he didn't get wise, the sound bite no. shit that everybody's looking for these exactly, days. Exactly, yeah. You know, yep. the, not hey, everybody can do that, but <clears throat> yeah, he didn't do the. Hey, Conor McGregor, you took everything you got, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> I want to fight your ass. That's what he should have said. I'm gonna fight your ass next. <laughs> Oh, what was next on the list? <laughs> well, <coughs> then we go to another good fight <coughs> in 145 pounds. <coughs> Coughing our asses We up got um, Mark Ware and Mr. Finland Mr. going Finland. against uh, Shane Burgos, who's a tough... tough That's a tough guy. out. Yeah, he's a tough dude. Uh, fun fact about Mark Ware and Mirakani, he took about a year off this last like, year, about a year, a year and a half, and fought... Five boxing matches. Is that right? Yeah, to shore up his 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 uh, shore up your striking striking game. Yeah, and he already has top level 
ground game. So, well, that's a move I like. I like it when fighters do shit like that. Yeah. How do he do? You know. Uh, he said he was four and one. That was not bad. Yeah. That's and he trains out of uh, out of SBG as well. So. Hmm. I'm liking him in this fight. I'm liking him too. By Hearing decision. That, yeah, I'd say decision. Train's a pretty tough guy. Yeah. He get knocked out. Uh, we got we got a fucking scrap at 170 next yeah, on these prelims here. 185 at that. Is it 185? Oh, no. Tavares is 85. Yeah, it? you're right. I'm sorry. It's not 170. It's 185. Uh, Brad Tavares versus uh, Shabazian. Yeah, Shabazian Damn. is. Come, took the UFC by the storm. I got to say, I was not a believer. You know, we first saw this kid when we went to the Ultimate Fighter finale. I, I wasn't mean, a non-believer in him. I was just non-believer in the people around him as far well, as yeah. his coaching staff. Yeah, I'm not afraid to still say it. I think I think his head coach Tarverdian's terrible. Yeah, I do too. I think that he's probably only succeeding just for the same reason Ronda Rousey succeeded, just yeah, because of her talent. sheer talent. Yeah. yeah. So this this kid and, fight came along, and we seen him at the Ultimate Fighter. We sat right by his family in the stands and all. Like it seemed he's exciting. Tough, yeah, he seemed tough. But I was like, whatever. He's not going to get anywhere because he's fucking around with Edmund Tarverdian. And now here he is. He's been kicking ass every every time we've seen him. We've seen all his fights um, since then. The yeah. kid looks fucking great. He man. must have other people behind the scenes around him that or help he is him a, round his game better. Just a well of talent, maybe. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, I mean, just for the. The fact of like having his game being so rounded off, because he he has a very solid game all he around. He does. I'm a believer. This kid, he could be a contender for sure. But this is the ultimate test because Brad Tavares is no fucking joke. He is a tough motherfucker, and he will stand and bang, and he will not go away. I know. I remember we were having a similar discussion about this when uh, Israel Adesanya fought Tavares. Yeah. You know, that this is a good test for somebody like this. And here we are once again. Tavares is kind of being tested. But the the only difference young up and the only here. difference is I don't think Edmund is as devastating as No, he's Israel not the talent that Adesanya is, yeah. but he is a talent. Yeah, definitely. And he's definitely but, looked better every fight. Like I I'm not skeptical anymore. So. I hate to say it, but I think this is too much too soon for him though. I think Tavares gets it done. I can't go I can't pick against him now. I I, I was Picking against him before, I'm saying Shabazian gets it done, probably in short work. Think so? Yeah. I think he might make Good short work. Good luck doing that to Brad Tavares. I know. Brad Tavares, I think what <clears throat> is going to be his biggest weakness is I think he's going to be trying a little too hard to put him away because all his UFC fights have been pretty quick and he was able to have his way with, with them that I think Tavares may be able to to fit those holes with his own big shots and put him in some trouble. He's such a big dude. Oh, I think he's going to be a lot taller than uh, Tavares. Maybe, I but he might, I, Tavares we'll, we'll is really explosive. We'll see. You know? It's a fucking great fight. Like The exciting thing about this UFC 244 card. Paul, every fight has every major implications. Fight, we're literally just going down the card here, and all these fights are fucking good. Like these, the, This is a solid fucking test of a fight here. Yeah. <clears throat> And if uh, if Brad Tavares fucking wins and knocks this kid off, that's a nice little feather in his cap to get. Yeah, and put him right ball back ball. in that top ten mix because he's what fifteen right now. I believe he is. Yeah. Yeah. So you put so him right back in the top ten if he's, he's able to go out and look really, really good. You hit this fucking. This fucking. Uh, the only real, the only uh, fight that really doesn't have any crazy implications is probably next, and that's that. Uh, Andre Olovsky versus however the fuck you say that guy's name. Not I even think it's try that. Yarzindho Rosenstruck. I, I I don't know. I don't know. He's a UFC newcomer to me at least. He's eight and zero though. He, he's heavyweight. Yeah, it sounds uh, like uh, <laughs> litmus test here. I'm hoping this is a fight for Andre to get back on track. Because I don't know nothing about. I don't know the first thing about his opponent here, but. If anybody ever needed Thinking a fight to get back on track, it would be Arlovsky. But the UFC tends to just feed the old to the young. It's the fight game. They don't do too many. Boxing will sometimes give you those fights to just kind of you know, get your course straightened out a little bit. Yeah. Get your winning ball rolling again. I don't think they're doing that for Andre here. No. <laughs> I, I, I hope think so, this, but... He's, I think this guy's going to beat him. He's probably going to get fucked up. I, I don't want him to, though. I'm, I'm, I'm picking Andre because I don't know nothing about this other guy. Take this other guy, but... Just by knockout in the second round. 
Ooh, second round knockout. Yeah. You think it's time. You think it's over, then. Yeah. It's been, I lost it's been over, done. dude. It's Honestly, unfortunately, it's been over, in my opinion. If he wasn't a heavyweight, I'd agree with you, but I think a heavyweight, you're like, Heavy, yeah, heavyweight, a little yeah. bit longer. But if he, if he gets slept the, here, then yeah, he, he knockout to losses done. don't get taken out of your head, though. No, 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 they don't. In this next fight, we got a girl who I don't even know why she's taking this fight, to be honest. But Caitlin Jakugian is fighting Jennifer Maya, coming off the win of uh, She's Beat Matafari not too long ago. Yeah, yeah. This is a good fight for both of them. I don't understand. I thought Caitlin was next for Valentina, and then they end up going with, um, who'd she just fight? Uh, yeah, they end up going. <coughs> who did she well, just? She doesn't get the title shot. That's what I'm saying. But who'd she just fight? Um, Fuck. That beat her before. What the fuck is her name? This nice pause of dead air is once again brought to you by Sticky Icky Green <laughs> Marijuana. <laughs> well, either way, she was set for a title shot. Liz Carmouche. Liz Carmouche, yeah. Yeah, and then, uh, so, <clears throat> then, yeah, Caitlin so, Kugin's kind of just left in, in the dark, but she said she was going to hold out for a title shot. But now you're going to fight Jennifer Maya, which I don't know if that's a great choice. She's yeah, a tough one. tough. It's a tough one. <clears throat> Yeah. But I still take Caitlyn, probably. I'll take Caitlyn, too. She's on a roll. She, I feel like she's probably going to be the next fight for Valentina. I don't yeah, think I she's think ready. I don't know if she's ready, I but I think... Win that fight. I don't think anyone's ever going to be ready, though, so... No. Unless you're... Valentina's unless you're like name's John Macy Jones Barber. in the way that... I mean, she could lose, but it almost yeah. means like she had to come It'd in. be like, ah, what the fuck happened? And, yeah. You know... Like unless someone like game. unless someone like legitimately dominated her, which I just don't see happening. I, I don't see it in this current crop of fighters, at least. No. I mean, there's always somebody that's gonna come along and whoop that ass, but I don't see it for a minute. Yeah. How about Lyman right. Good versus Chance Rick Holmtre? I like. Dude, I can't pick against Chance, dude. He's looked yeah, so savage he's looked in his last fight. Good, too. <laughs> dude. Lyman Good though has got something to prove here. He Dude, lost is legit as fuck. He lost two fights ago, but then won his last one. So this is a chance to really get back on. And the he's track. a good fighter. He's, oh yeah, he's, like he's a guy. Former champion, isn't he? too. Yeah, yeah. He's about uh, what Bellator. Yeah, he's a tough no, guy. He's, he's absolutely. So, yeah, I like, I like, uh, I like Chance though. Still. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna pull out the win here. Yeah, maybe Savage, maybe Decision. Could be. <clears throat> Because Lyman Good is very tough. He is a tough motherfucker. We're going to go in there and finish him. Maybe. Yeah. God. Maybe, maybe. What a good card. I think there's one other fight. Is, uh, is it Julio Arce? I don't have no, no idea how to say his name. Yeah. Versus uh, Hakeem Dwadu. 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 He's probably a tough butchering his name. I'm sorry, I like him. I'm, I'm taking Dwadu. Yeah, I'm taking him too. He's the only guy. I don't know anything about the other guy. I've seen uh, Dwadu... He's a tough motherfucker. However, I mispronounced his name, dude. He looked like a beast in his last fight, though. I do remember that. Yeah. And uh, picking him win, too. And that's the whole card. Yep. Those are solid fights top to bottom. One thing I uh, wanted to bring up as well, on uh, UFC 245, we had a couple of fights announced this week. We had uh, uh, fucking Jose Aldo is now fighting um, Marlon Marais. Marlon Marais. Yeah. At fucking at 135 pounds. 35. How skinny is Jose Aldo fucking looks Jose Aldo so looking, skinny. man? Holy shit. Oh, my God. I barely even recognize him in that picture. I know. He's like, I just went it on was a diet. Like, <laughs> it's like, it what, was like, is that, what is that, diet is that Jose you, Aldo's little brother? Yeah, fuck. <laughs> he said he walks around at 150 pounds. That's yeah. ridiculous. He looks... He looks... Yeah. And then you got to wonder where Mariah's head's at after that. He basically got mind fucked by Henry Cejudo. We're in a fight that looked like he was extremely dominant, in, but the tide turned really quick Boy, and he got ever. put away. <clears throat> so this is his real chance to put his stamp on where he's at in this division and get his chance to maybe get a rematch. Because there is claim somewhat for a rematch if he were to go out here and beat Aldo. Yeah, especially convincingly. Yeah. but uh... And then also on that card... Well, who do you got in that fight first? I, I can't pick. Oh, man, 
I don't think know, Aldo. That's tough. I'm, I'm, I think Aldo's gonna win that fight. I'm, I'm guessing Aldo because it's fucking Jose Aldo. I mean, you know they're former training partners, right? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, former training partners. Yeah, I can't pick against fucking Aldo. Yeah, I'm taking Aldo as well. That's an interesting addition to 135. But you know what? There, we're starting to get some clarity at 135 though, because they also added on there. Uriah Faber versus Pilcher Dion. Yes. Which I like that fight as well. Yeah, that's the number one contender fight. Possibly, yeah. Both those, it could be very well. similar to what we were talking about a couple weeks ago with uh, Dominic Reyes and then this Corey Anderson, Johnny Walker fight. Yeah. You know, both these fights at 135 where it's really wide open if you think about it. Like, there's been rumors that it's going to be Henry and Dominic. That's kind of where it seems like it might head. But this could very well be the next guy up, you know. For sure. Which kind of sucks because Aljamain Sterling is still without a fight. Although uh, there's been rumblings that he was going to fight Frank Yeager. Yeah, he got injured, I do believe. Yeah, he did. Yeah. <sighs> sucks. Stuff. Because he's suck. fucking. He his last fight really looked like he was the number one contender, and yeah. now these guys could very well come in and swoop his title shot. It could happen. <clears throat> I think one the whole one twenty five thing is dead. I don't think Sudo's going to twenty five again. No, they need to just strip him of that title. Have yeah. uh, Figaro fight Figaro. Yeah, for the interim or vacant or whatever they or do. Or whatever you're gonna do with the division, because it also like at the same time they might just still collapse it. Well, I hope they don't do that after all this nonsense. But it, whatever. Yeah, it's the fucking UFC. They do whatever. Pretty much. But yeah, so uh, let's, uh, let's transition. Yeah, that wraps up that a bit. Yeah. So yeah, let's transition over to uh, Bellator for a little bit. Bellator had some interesting things happen. <clears throat> we had what the there were back to back Bellator events a few days ago. We saw what the first one, Frank Mir versus Roy Nelson. It was headlined by, and then the yep. second one was the welterweight uh, finals in the welterweight tournament for the. That championship plus a million dollar prize. There's some fucking good fights there. Ed Ruth won. Yeah. Fucking, uh, obviously, Frank Mir got it done. Frank Mir decisions, uh, big country. Frank Mir needed that, too, just to get on track in Bellator. You know, that first yeah. fight sucked for him, dude. Yeah. He got beat by Fedor, remember? Yeah, that, wasn't that was a, tough. That was tough. He got crazy. <laughs> he swinging. hurt him, too, though. Remember? Because he, he hurt him, and then he just got a little too. He was like, oh, shit, I just yeah, heard Fedor. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, and then he got fucking rocked. And then, uh, yeah. In that fucking throw, too. That was nice. Yeah, it was. Fedor, like, you know, people can say what they want about Fedor, but he's his in-cage awareness is so high that, like, even at an older age, he's able to find his way out of bad situations. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Obviously. I yeah. think that's his biggest strength against a lot of these guys. Although Mir's been in the... In lockdown forever as well, but you know, you know what I mean. I know what you're saying. It's probably time for Big Country to hang it up now. Yeah, unfortunately, I mean, he's a nice guy. It's been a fun run, lots of cool shit. Yeah, but uh, it's it's time to. He's what time lost four again. straight now. Yeah, and not doing too good before that either. I mean, he had yeah. his run. He was a he was going for a minute in the UFC. Obviously, a great run on tough. I mean, he was the uh, IFL heavyweight champ, fucking way before then. Yep. So it's been great. It's been fun. Everybody knows what big country is, but damn, we don't need to keep seeing him fight. It's getting kind of pointless. I mean, he's not yeah. getting KO'd and slept, but I mean, these aren't fun <clears throat> fights, dude. Yeah, they're not. No. It's not. That's not the way it used to be with the guy. Yeah. It's kind of a chore to watch. I mean, yeah, it's pretty tough. I love you, big country, but Jesus, that's what's yeah. about, bro. Yeah, for sure. And then uh, we had the next fight, or our, the, on Saturday night, we had the fight with uh, Rory McDonald and uh, Lima at the top. Yeah, so for the not only the welterweight championship, but, but the a tournament million dollars. finals and the, its million dollar fucking prize, and some champagne from Fifty Cent, and some champagne from Fifty Cent, <laughs> and it was uh, what the second time these guys met. Uh, Rory won the first match to get the title. Very close decision, very in which close. Rory had to be carried out of the octagon after. Yeah, it was brutal. And then uh, we wind up seeing Lima this time just get it done. actually been it, yeah, just being able yeah. to execute the exact game plan he had in the first fight but just was able to do it you know 
He didn't really change his game plan up very much, but this time he was able to stuff the takedowns and he was able to keep Rory on the feet and win the exchanges, and that's why he won this fight. And very convincingly as well. It, was, it looked like Rory just didn't belong in there. Yeah, he didn't look like he didn't want to be there very much. And he's Ten unfortunately looked like that in his cage. last three fights. Yeah, I don't know. If, I don't think he's got that burning desire anymore. I wouldn't be I was surprised surpri- if he retires. I mean, well, he almost did before. Yeah. The unfortunate part is... Well, not unfortunate. Really, it's really up to him at the end of the day. But this was going to be his last fight on his Bellator contract. But because he lost the fight, his contract is extended one more fight because he has an automatic rematch clause. So he would have been a, a free agent had he you won. You think he would have fought with a little bit more urgency with not just a title defense, but also a million dollar prize plus free agency. Yeah, for sure. Coming off the shine of their tournament win. Flush with cash. Uh, you know what, though? I can't really see it that way, though, because Diego Lima's been on a fucking... Yeah, it's or not like... Douglas Lima, I'm sorry. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's easy to Douglas get Lima's been fucking... Yeah. Uh, he's been on a freaking tear. His last fight against MVP fucking slept oh, him. Yeah. His fight against Koroshkov. You know what he's done? He's yeah, really he found a way too. that in the fights that he had that were closer earlier in his career where he had game plan like lapses, he was able to overcome them and really focus on his game plan and bolt his rematches to to win the the next time. You know what I mean? Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. He's a tough motherfucker. I think he's this is the third time. He's a three time. <clears throat> in all honesty, he could very <laughs> one seventy is tough in the UFC, but I think he's just as good as any UFC champion at one hundred seventy pounds. Yeah, I can't disagree with that. I think uh, he's one of the best right fighters on. in the world, pound for pound. Yeah, for sure. He's legit as fuck. He is devastating on the feet. Well, what's going to be next for him? Maybe someone like Ed Ruth who won the other night. Could be. Someone, I don't know. It's just like he's beat everybody at 170 pounds. There's only so many more names he can fight. It'd either be like Gracie, <clears throat> Ruth, like mm-hmm. that. Uh, maybe Dylan Dan is down the line. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, there's just like only so many names at 170 pounds in Bellator that he hasn't fought or hasn't fought recently. Maybe like, I don't know, daily, I guess, maybe. Yeah. You know. He's coming there's coming off that TKO win here this past week. Yeah. Well. That's what I'm saying. There's only so many guys left for him to fight. Well, right now, the motherfucker's happy with his million-dollar prize. Hell yeah, I'd be too. Getting his title back, being the tournament champ as well. So they, they issue a belt for that too. So he's got a, a collection of trophies, a collection of cash. And a sick-ass feeling, belt. I you know, like Bellator's rubber belts. match in the future. is. I mean, that's probably the most likely thing is if Rory still has this desire to fight, then he has that automatic rematch. And they'll get a and trilogy then, then it's a rubber it. match. It'll be a trilogy. Yeah. It makes sense. They're one and one <clears throat> But I just don't know if Rory's got that. But we'll see. We'll see what's up with that. Yeah. Um, this was pretty dominant, though. It, very. Yeah, it wasn't close. I think it was forty nine forty six in the end, right? It was fifty forty five times two, and then one forty nine forty six. One okay. judge gave one round to Rory. Yeah. So, yeah. So not much question not there. Not much. So there's other interesting news in Bellator. They had another fight announcement, yeah. which is kind of a crazy one. But we got a heavyweight bout between the aforementioned Fedor. Versus Rampage Jackson, who's sticking yep. around a heavyweight. On the New Year's card against Ryzen. It's going to be Ryzen versus... And Ryzen versus Bator. Or uh, Ryzen versus Bellator. Card. Yeah. I like it. I like it, too. It's I'm cool. surprised their paths haven't crossed before in the past. Yeah. Maybe it's just... I don't know why either, but we're getting... We're getting Fat Rampage versus Fedor now. I mean, it was a great fight, you know, a decade ago. It's a fun, it's a fun fight now, right? <laughs> I like it. I like it. <clears throat> Rampage is a savage, so you know he's probably he's got the showmanship. Fedor is crazy, you know. It Wasn't be he good. like two sixty <clears throat> in his last fight, Rampage? Something like that. He's. I mean, we went from two hundred five to something that came out, and I was like, "Well, he's been who's that dude." He's training with Chuck Congo too, so you know he's he's used to fighting, uh, rolling around with these bigger guys. Yeah, he can hang. <coughs> I guess. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I got to fa- favor uh, Fedor in that fight, but me too. You know, Rampage could be the guy to retire him, I suppose. 
vicious KO. It could happen. Or he could win and both of them can retire, because I'd like that, too. I'm not against that either. <laughs> Shit. <clears throat> That's so a lot of retiring needs to be going on here. Bellator, they're still keeping that mix of, like, uh, this, these tournaments that they're doing and these kind of tent pole fun fights. Yeah. With, you know, Fedor versus Rampage definitely falling into the latter category. Absolutely. So, yeah, and then other big news for Bellator, Sergio Pettis is now headed over there, leaving the UFC. That's a good signing on their part. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's a young star on the come-up right there. That's not one of these over-the-hill UFC fighters, absolutely. far from it. Yeah. Sergio could go over there. I don't think they had a 125 division, so I yeah. assume it's 135. 135 is looking for some some uh, some spark it up, too. Yeah, that's a good addition. He could... Quickly find himself fighting for a title there with a couple wins, I'd say. Yeah, we'd fight Horiguchi, wouldn't he? <clears throat> yeah. Be interesting. That would be interesting. Because not too long ago, we were talking about Sergio Pettis possibly fighting Demetrius Johnson. Yeah, that wasn't that long ago. Because if you think about it, before, before the Henry Cejudo fight, everyone kind of thought Henry Cejudo was going to lose that fight. And then DJ wasn't going to have any any contenders. And Pettis was and then Pettis, to win whatever that his next. Well, no, was Joseph time. Benavidez was supposed to beat Pettis. He was coming back, remember, from his injury, his yeah. knee injury, and everyone thought, thought that they were going to give Benavidez a third chance at at uh, DJ. And then he lost. He beat uh, um, Joseph Benavidez, and then everyone was talking about that he might fight DJ. And then of course DJ ends up leaving and loses to Henry Cejudo. So not too long ago, Sergio Pettis could have been. He was in that title talk. He in, could find in himself the, in title yeah. talk in Bellator. Pretty That's what I'm quick. saying. <clears throat> like he's not he's not too far gone from that that guy. No. The only fight he really lost in the UFC, the guy literally sat in a triangle, standing up and in guard, <laughs> fucking just hitting him with little jabs, doing nothing for <laughs> fucking yeah. three rounds. Yeah. So. Well, I'm excited to see what he can do over there. That's cool. Yeah. Good for him. We'll get some sponsors again. Fuck yeah. All right. Make that money. Well, that probably wraps up the show for today, man. Yeah. You know, we got an exciting card. It'll be just a few days from when we air here. It's going to be fucking... Yep. If you're watching nice, this on Thursday, nice happy holiday. Halloween, motherfuckers. Yeah, happy Halloween, everybody. And, uh... Enjoy these fights, however you're watching them. If you order them, stream them, go to the bar, whatever it is, you're going to want to watch these. Hell yeah. And uh, catch next week's show. We'll be talking about who the baddest motherfucker is Hell yeah. in the league at this point. And uh, we'll be no on Thursdays. No more sadness, motherfuckers. No more sad. Man, it, it came <laughs> close. It came close. But uh, if you're new to the show, thanks for tuning in. You can catch us on Thursday nights, WBUZ95, on the Orange Radio app or at radio.net. 6 p.m. on the West Coast, 8 p.m. Central Time, 9 p.m. Eastern. Get, Get all your information, information at swatmay.com where you can go out over there, head on the gear button, and get yourself a nice jacket for the holidays. You know, support the motherfucking podcast. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Peace. Peace.